Hey everybody, it's Rob Nelson here. Today we're going to be looking at time-lapse troubleshooting. We're going to figure out how to deflicker a time-lapse that might look like this and turn it into something that looks like this. Now all of this is going to be done in post, that's why I'm here in the studio today. And it's a really fun episode because I get to interact with some of you all. In fact, Peter Forrester, who runs a channel called Forrester Bushcraft, link to his videos here, uh, does bushcraft videos where he talks about making fires and living in the wilderness. And he did a recent video where he was up in the mountains, the tallest place in the UK. And he was trying to take some videos and he made a time lapse in there that looked like this. And I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know what? I actually think I can give you some tips on making a better time lapse. Um, obviously, the time lapse looks really good already, but there was a couple things that I noticed out there. And so in this episode, I want to give some friendly tips and tricks for those of you who have shot video that, you know, and your time lapses look like this. We can definitely fix this. But when you're in the field, the two things you need to keep in mind is one, keep everything manual. And two, make sure that your tripod is as stable as possible. So even if you have it on a tripod, little bits of wind can jiggle it around. So sometimes you can put weights on it. That's really important. Now, when I talk about keeping everything in manual, that includes your white balance, your focus, of course, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. So that's five different things. And your camera, can try to adjust all of those unless you set all of them. And a lot of times you're gonna to have to go into the menu system to make that happen. Now there's a few other tips and tricks that I can show you once we start diving into the pictures, but let's just look what we have here. So, all right, so here, let me, let me, let me just show you the original mountain time-lapse set that we've got and I'll open them up big. And as I scroll through them, these are all JPEGs. First of all, I would encourage you to shoot them all in raw because they'll have a lot more data where you can manipulate them later like we're doing. Secondly, we're going to be going through LR time lapse to do all the deflickering, and you need raw images to do that. So you're, we're going to have to take these JPEGs and convert them in Lightroom to a DNG file, which is kind of a, a raw file that we can use across multiple platforms. Now, the first thing, look at these images. As I scroll through, let's get to the top here. Um, the first thing that I noticed is that we scroll through here. There's a little bit of movement between shots. Here at the beginning, you can also tell that um, all of a sudden the background loses focus. So um, clearly the focus wasn't set, at least at this time. Uh, Peter might have adjusted it later. But even as you go throughout, look right here on the mountain side. Do you see how um, it's it flickers a little bit in between images? Well, that mountainside, if you have everything set manually, shouldn't be flickering. The sun is not changing. And so that's what we're going to fix. So let's bring all of these in. I'll just grab the original folder and I'll just drag it into Lightroom. Now Lightroom's gonna go through and ask me, do I wanna import all of these? And yes, I do, let's import them. Okay, so this is what we've got to work with. Now every single one of these images looks pretty good as it is, um, but what we have to do now is we have to export them as a GNG file. So let's select all of them by doing Apple A, and then go to Export. And then what we'll do, we're gonna put this as um, Mountain DNGs, we'll call that. And what we wanna do is we wanna grow, go down here into our file settings and instead of JPEG image, we wanna export them as a DNG file. We will export it just like that. Okay, perfect. Now, just so that I don't get too confused, I'm gonna actually delete this whole system. Uh, now let's go into LR time lapse, open it up and start playing with these files. Okay, we're just gonna navigate to our mountain DNGs. Now the first thing that you'll notice is there's 128 images here, which equates to four seconds. Now, ideally, when you shoot a time lapse, you're probably gonna wanna make at least 10 seconds, which equates to about 300 images. So as you're setting down and you're snapping those photos, figure out how long you have to be there to get 300. Now the next thing is that LR time lapse here will give us a little bit of insight into these photos. Now I know Peter told me that everything was set to manual, but when I look at the footage, it actually shows me here that um, the aperture dropped down to nine right at this moment. Everything else stayed the same right here. It dropped to nine. And so um, LR time lapse creates this little illuminance curve and it shows that there are bumps up and bumps down at different times in the time-lapse, and that's what we're going to fix. Now, 
first thing we're going to do is going to go to Keyframe Wizard. Now the way this works in LR Time Lapse is you just click one to the next to the next all the way through. Now if you don't have LR Time Lapse, this is going to be easy enough to follow anyways because I'm going to be speeding through it. Uh, I have a more detailed uh, you know, description of how to do it right here. Okay, hitting Keyframe Wizard. Now even though it says I only need one keyframe, I'm going to put a couple of keyframes in here. One at the start, frame zero and one at the bottom, frame two, and then I'm gonna say save. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this little button into Lightroom. Now it's gonna import all of the photos now as its own unique thing. I deleted the other photo, remember? So let's just say import. Okay, so here we have them all. Now we're only gonna be manipulating the two keyframes that I put in LR time lapse, And those have four stars. You can see the very first one here and the very last one. Now I can filter it by just saying, show me only the ones with four stars. Whoops, just like this. All right, so now let's go in and just do a little bit of manipulation on it so that we can see that we made some sort of a difference to it. Um, like we'll go into the develop module. Um, now I, I like to not do a whole lot, but um, because these were JPEGs, we can't bring a whole lot out. I'm gonna bump up the clarity just a little bit and the vibrance just a little bit to add some saturation to it. I also think it maybe is a little bit yellow, so I'm gonna drop the yellow and maybe add just a little bit more blue and maybe I'm gonna add uh, one gradient. Now, LR Time Lapse comes with these preset gradients in here. You can't use your own, you have to use theirs, so just stick with that. Um, I'm gonna uh, make the sky, because the sun's hitting things, just a little bit more magenta. Um, so something like this I think looks kind of nice, but we're not gonna go overkill. It's just a little bit, uh, a little bit of fun, and I'm gonna actually increase the exposure a tad. Yeah, there we go. I mean, you could go crazy with these things. If you were shooting in RAW, you could do a whole lot more. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna just copy this to the next one. And I think that looks pretty good from the start to the end. Honestly, I probably didn't need a keyframe, but just for fun, because I added a keyframe, let's change, uh, change one of the features so that maybe we can see something. Let's add a little bit more orange to the sky. Uh, sorry, a little bit more magenta to the sky, and we're gonna drop that gradient filter down a little bit. So maybe during this time lapse, you can see a very slight change, and hopefully that'll work. So okay, both of those are now adjusted. All right, so now I have to save this metadata so that I can bring it back into LR time lapse. So you go up to Photo, and you go down to Save Metadata to File, and then you just say Continue. Okay, so that's saved. Now we can go back to LR time lapse and then you say reload. Now what that does is it changes the first image and puts in the metadata that we just created. Now you're gonna to go to auto transition and click that and it's going to grade from that first image to the last image the things that you had put in there. And then we're gonna save that information and that's gonna allow us to bring up visual previews. So we'll click that one. And what you can see is that it already starts bringing up um, let's make this really big so that we can see it. Now this is actually processing the images and it's creating a visual preview for us, which is really handy and it goes fairly quickly. Now what you can see here is this is a luminance graph and you can see that it's going up and down. Well, the tricky thing now, if we watch and we, we play it, it's, it's flickering. We haven't done any deflickering to the shot yet. So we can go ahead and do a, a quick de visual deflicker to start. And what that'll do is, is um, if you slide this thing here, the smoothing thing, you can, you can do it more or less according to the curve or you can smooth it out a lot more. Now, apparently you don't wanna do it too much. So we're just gonna go somewhere in the middle range and we're gonna apply. And then we're going to save that and then that will allow us to create a new visual preview. So let's see how that looks now that we've done some deflickering to it. Now what you'll notice is that it is still flickering. Now the reason for that is it's looking at the total luminance of the entire picture and trying to adjust it. Well, what we've noticed is that as the clouds are moving over and it's creating shadows in different places, well, the camera was also trying to adjust for that very same thing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag a box right here around a section of the mountains that is not being uh, covered by any clouds. So let's like play it just to make sure 
yeah, I think that more or less works okay. Now, we can do a visual preview with that box as the place where the uh, computer is going to try to figure out the deflicker. Okay, so it's done its thing now. Let's hit D, visual deflicker and see what happens here. We might need to refine it just a little bit and then save that. All right, now, okay, that looks much better. You can see there's still a little bit of jiggling. That's what we're going to cr do next. All right, so I think we're good with that. Now let's, um, it's already saved, all the metadata is, so let's go into Lightroom. And then with everything selected, you go up to metadata. Uh, you go up to read metadata from files say read, and it's going to change all of these images just slightly to, you know, based on how we deflickered it while they're all still selected. Okay, did its thing. We go up to file, export, we'll drop it into mountain finals, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to export them as JPEGs because it's easier to read with my editing program. So I'll click JPEGs and export. Now everything is exported into this mountain finals folder. Now we can either bring it into After Effects, Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro X. I'm going to do it in Final Cut Pro X. It's super easy. If you have one of the other editing programs, it's really going to be the same thing. I think you can read through it. Okay, so we have Final Cut open. Let's go ahead and create a new... Oops. All right, now let's create a new project. What I'm going to do, though, uh, is I'm going to make a... Let's make this a 2K image, something really big. Actually, let's make 4K, just for fun. And I'm going to make it at a 24P frame rate so that I get the longest time lapse that I can. And I'll just click OK. All right, and we'll call this uh, Time Lapse Mountains Final um, Temp. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. Okay, now the first thing is I'm going to bring in the Mountain Finals right here, all of these pictures into my project. Now, with them all selected, I'm going to grab them and just bring them in. And when that happens, it brings them all in at, um, I don't know, like three or four seconds a piece. So you're going to have to hit Control D, and that allows you to adjust them right here. Uh, the duration, I'm just going to click one because I want them to do one frame a piece. And now, if we watch through them, we can see that there's still a little bit of flickering going on, but that's okay um, because what we're going to do, I'm just going to create this as a new compound clip already. And because we have a really large image, I'm going to export this whole thing right now. So I'm just going to say share master file as a 4K image because it's very large, um, which is totally fine. Um, you can see the resolution is large. All right, let's click next. Mount, let's put it on the desktop. Uh, time lapse mountains temporary, and let's call it 4K. Okay, and the reason you can create 4K images is that the pictures that you begin with are very large, so that this kind of makes it so that you can export a really awesome high resolution photo. And you can still see that there's some shake to it, but we're going to go now and stabilize it. Now let's bring this mountain time lapse into our project. We can see that it's gonna pop up right here, 4K. Now let's go to this project, which I created, which is just a 1080p, and let's bring in the, oh goodness gracious. Let's bring in the 4K image into it. Okay, now first thing, that you're going to need to do is you're going to, we're going to need to zoom in on it. So we're going to uh, use the transform tool and zoom in because we don't want those black bars on the side. First thing. Secondly, I'm going to adjust it so there's a little bit more foreground going on here. So there we go. That's going to be my framing. And if we just scroll around this, let's look at it. Okay, ooh, looking nice. Now, go to stabilization. This is where it is on Final Cut Pro X. Um, Warp Stabilizer and After Effects, anything you want to do, and it's going to do its thing. Alright, now let's look at it and play it. Um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> now just for fun, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Ken Burns effect to it. And the start's going to be there, and it's just going to be a slow zoom in. Something like that. Let's see how that looks. Wow, I think that looks awesome. 
All right, so there's the final image. You can compare it to the original right here, and I think it makes a huge difference just to do a little bit of post-processing to it. So I think that end result looked pretty good compared to what we had. We deflickered it with LR time lapse and we stabilized it in our editing program. Okay, now before we go, we have this giveaway that I want to um, tell you about. We have two weeks before we do this giveaway. We'll do it the first week in April. This is a wireless transmitter. You can look it up. It's called the Cam Ranger. You plug into your DSLR or camcorder, and uh, as long as it has HDMI import into it, it will then wires wirelessly transmit your image so that you can pick it up on your phone, and then you can actually take your phone, not only are you using it as a monitor, but you can hit record and it will send it to the camera, all kinds of really cool stuff. I don't use it anymore. Uh, I just don't shoot in that way. I like to be a little bit more run and gun than you know hooking things up, but it's pretty cool. It's $300 and I had it sitting on my desk and it just kills me that it's sitting there and I'm not using it. So I thought one of you might use it and in exchange, maybe you guys can help me out a little bit. Even if you don't want this, you can still help us out. I wanna get to know you all better. Jonas and I make these videos for you, but I was just, you know, a survey I thought would be useful. So we made a Google spreadsheet. You can see the link right here. I'll also put it in the description. So if you click on that, basically just let us know what kind of cameras you use, what your editing program is, what kind of filmmaking or photography you do, how long you've been in it. Um, it's really simple, but it will allow us to tailor these videos for you, because I know uh, when I was starting out, I just was really craving some of these videos, and even now, I enjoy watching tutorials online. That's how I learn, too. Thanks again to Peter Forrester of his YouTube channel, Forrester Bushcraft, for taking the time to watch our stuff, comment on it, um, and also be so kind to send us the raw JPEGs from his time lapse so that we were able to do this little tutorial and show you how to deflicker them, all this post process processing that we're doing. Leave us comments below everybody about what you want us to talk about in future episodes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. I'd like to do a little bit of a shout out to a channel, uh, Robin Jonas's Filmmaking. Yes. Um, a very, very, very useful channel for, from ev for every aspect of filmmaking. And every time I've commented on their videos as well, you know, they have responded pretty quickly with useful, valuable information. Really, really good guys. So I do recommend getting over there and checking it out.